up, what up, y'all? I am your girl, Candy, and guess who I got with me? Hi, your girl, Brett Tatet. Yes, and Brett and I are about to speak on it. Speak on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I guess you've seen Speak On It before. Yeah, I paid a little attention to it, paid a little okay. attention to it. I had already heard. I can turn a shade tree into a money tree. <laughs> Well, guys, it's pretty cool to have my girl Brett here. I know. We've been man. knowing each other since we were still in the teens. Man, yeah, like still in the teens, mid nineties. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. wait, how old were you when you signed to So So Dip? Ooh, I think I was eighteen, maybe seventeen. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, boy, that's... I remember I walked in JD house. I was so excited to be there. Boy, I felt like y'all did not like me. Why? Oh, no. It was just like a, it was a weird feeling. I was like, oh, man. I was like, oh, I love y'all. I love them. Man, it was, y'all, I feel like y'all ain't like me at all. I don't think I felt that way. I definitely don't think I felt that way. Y'all was looking at me now, like, who did bitch hop on? <laughs> well, now we might have gave you that look. It, y'all did. We might have gave you that look because, I mean, of course, you know, we were the first. Exactly. One signed to So So, so, so Deaf. Deaf. And then, um, obviously, you came along and, and you know, I, I don't know. If I have to be honest with you. I always felt like you immediately had like this friendship with him. Yeah. That we didn't have. Right. You know what I mean? Like we were cool with him. Right. But your shit with excuse <laughs> me, but you right. and Jermaine were like Yeah. Immediately like this. Yeah. And we were just kind of like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> they don't treat us like that. You know what I mean? Or you know, just the simple fact, like, you know, if you know that you signed to somebody and... Well, where, was our first album out before, before you came? I think so. So, you know, we blew up, you know, our first yep. album was out or yep. whatever. And, you know, we had done numbers or whatever, but I still don't think, like, our friendship was the same. Like, meaning, what I mean is, like, say, for instance, if it was time to go out or do something, he gonna call Brett <laughs> on the regular. <laughs> we may or may not. You but know, that's because y'all was more girly, girly. You know what I'm saying? And <gasps> I was, and I was more tomboyish. Like I was like the third member of Crisscross. Like we would okay. wrestle. We would like smack each other on the ass till our hand was red and swollen. Like we would do all kinds of <laughs> play video games. Y'all yes. wasn't into that type of stuff. Y'all just came. I actually with was into video games. Really? I was, and I used to gamble with him all the time. <laughs> like when everybody yeah. remember, everybody used to gamble yes, and yes. do all the dice yes. and all that. Like I was into that, but I just kind of felt like. And I, and I don't think it's just me, but I feel like uh, us as a group, we definitely did not feel like the same friendship right. or whatever that you guys, y'all definitely had a friendship from the jump that yeah. was rare. You never thought about sex in Jermaine Dupree? No, but when I first met him, I did have a crush on him. Really? I did. I thought he was the cutest little thing. Oh, wow. Well, you don't want any more brats, right? Huh? You don't want any more Well, it's brats. only one brat. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Ha! I guess he told you, Gary. <laughs> but I don't, I mean, I wasn't trying to act funny with no, you. No, I mean, I just felt it. I just felt it. Coming from Chicago, growing up in church, it was like everything was, I love you, I love you, hugs, I love you. So coming to Atlanta was very different. Mm -hmm. And being that y'all was like the first group that I met at JD's house when I came down there, expecting to love and hug and kiss on everybody and be like, oh my God, I love y'all. <laughs> it was like, skirt, who you, bitch? <laughs> And I was, was like, all of us like that? I just felt it. I don't know if it came from two of y'all, three of y'all, all, all oh, of y'all. Okay. But you can feel it. And I was uh -huh. like, ooh, they don't like me. Oh, girl. We I got the same thing from Left Eye, though, so. You did? I'm used to it, yeah. 
She ain't like me, man. I loved her too. Like I loved her. Maybe it I was would've... that both of y'all rapped. And you know, she was JD's right hand partner. You know, oh, so yeah. I'm another female rapper that came in mm -hmm. and she probably felt the same way. Like, uh, who did Hoppo? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I just kind of felt like back then it was like, okay, boom, we all doing our thing. We in the house together. Definitely she had the better relationship with your boy. Okay. <laughs> and I um, still do. She still does. You know what I mean? How did it feel? Since we're going to go back to that. How did it feel when you first started on your project? It felt unreal. Like, it, I couldn't believe it was really happening because I'm from Chicago. I didn't expect to be in Atlanta. I had friends that had uh, buddy passes for TWA, and it was just getting hooked up, and stuff was just laying in line. Like, I didn't really realize it. Like, in 92, Criss Cross had a concert in Chicago. I didn't know I was going to go to that concert, but my god sister Dawn was messing around with somebody, and we ended up <laughs> going to the concert, and I ended up running on stage to rhyme, and Chris and Chris, you know, they was trying to holler. We was exchanging numbers and stuff. They was like, we going to our producer about you i'm like yeah right and they really did huh. so then that same girl had a contact at the oprah winfrey show mm -hmm. my god sister dawn and she got me tickets and that's when crisscross marky mark and the funky funky bunch cnc music factory and tlc was there and i met jd for the first time yeah it's fun but is it like like when you were growing up well you still are growing up but when you were growing up and you saw other famous people you sort of had an idea of what it was like so is it like that does it feel like that but he didn't want to hear me rap because you know he was like come to atlanta i'm like oh okay like i got the money to just come to atlanta <laughs> that same guy sister had to hook up with twa and we flew to atlanta where did you find her? Uh -uh, no, you did. Like, I came out the dump. Excuse you, Gary. Like, I was lost or something. Or left on the doorstep of somebody's uh, right. house or something. And then he just signed you. No, he ain't signed me. I, when I tell you I stalked this nigga like a hundred phone calls a day, and nobody called me back after I finally made it to Atlanta, Skeeter Rock, Eddie Weathers. I was trying to call him a hundred times. He called me back after like two days. Mm -hmm. Running out of money in the hotel, about to leave. He finally called me back, and then JD came and got us from the hotel. It was meant to be. Huh. Because <laughs> then, obviously, um, some of y'all may or may not know, but she is the first woman to ever go platinum yeah, as man. a rapper. As a solo artist, that's as right. Salt artist. and Pepper did it first as a group female, but mm -hmm. I'm the first solo female rapper to do that. Which is super dope. Hell yeah, because can't nobody take that away from you, no matter what. It never can take away yeah, being you a can't, first. You can't. That's why I always love when I get a you first. Can, yes, like, yeah. What you yeah. gonna do? What Second, gonna do? third, fourth, fifth, that don't even matter. Exactly. The first. Yes, the mm -hmm. very first. So anyway, okay, so that was then. Mm -hmm. It was a lot going on, but I'm going to try to fast forward to what has happened recently because then I got to go back. Okay. okay, okay. All right, so I'm fast forwarding to recently because... In June, mm -hmm. you basically came out to the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what was the publication? Uh, Variety. In Variety Magazine. Mm -hmm. Okay. For you, mm -hmm. that was a major moment. Major moment. What made mm -hmm. you decide to do that? Um. Well, my significant other, or the, the woman that I was in love with, um, she's a public social media-like figure, so... Mm -hmm. She lives her life, like, out loud. What do you do when you fall in love with somebody that's, like, already out loud and then you are private? You got to meet somewhere in the middle mm -hmm. and make some kind of sacrifice and compromise. So I felt like I absolutely wanted to because she was worth it. And so now we have a happy medium where the stuff we don't want people to know, we don't talk about. Like, she's learned that privacy part from me, and I learned that kind of being out a little bit and expressing and showing some of the love that you got for each other in public from her. So did you have to have a conversation for that to happen? <clears throat> um, no, I just absolutely felt comfortable. And we was cracking jokes one day. We was at her mom's house in New Orleans because her daughter was having a baby. Mm -hmm. And um, she was like, I'm going to post it. I was like, I don't care, post it. What picture you going to post? I'm going to post it first. And she was like, I'm going to post it. I'm like, yeah, right. So a few days went by, she didn't post it. So I'm here sitting here trying to figure out what I'm going to post. And I look up and she didn't post it. I'm like, oh, bitch, I guess we just came out. <laughs> 
And I was like, oh my God, I was nervous, but I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, I'm happy. I don't care. I'm in love with this woman. She completes me. She makes me happy. She makes me feel like I've never felt before. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah, I want people to know. That don't mean I'm finna tell them every inch and nook and cranny of my business, but right. this part, as far as my happiness, I've never shown it. I've never talked about who I was with. I mean, you got a little leak of it when I was fucking with Allen Iverson, but that's mm. that's about, you know, you ain't get too, you might have thought you knew, but I never confirmed anything because I always felt like that was the only thing that I was able to have to myself, private, got was it. my personal life. Mm -hmm. But now I'm like, I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm happy. I want people to see I'm happy. This is who makes me happy. Mm -hmm. And it is what it is. So, what did you feel? What was the response? Oh, man, I got nothing but good responses, yo. It made me feel so good that I did it. First of all, for myself, it was like a weight lifted. Uh-huh. But the responses, I got nothing but positive responses. Then you got your troll motherfuckers talking about, we been there, we do that. <laughs> That's what I that, But listen. That ain't nothing new. I, but did I not tell you, you a long did. time ago? You did. Just live your life. You Don't did. nobody care. You did. When I got out of jail, prison, you met me at my manager's house when I was still on the ankle monitor and you was wanting to do this uh, TV show about lesbians. And I was like, girl, I ain't doing that shit. I was like, okay, girl. I thought about it, but I just wasn't ready. I was still scared. I was like, I'm not finna get on here with all these gay bitches and be looking all crazy. Like, how can I pull it off and participate and not look gay? You know what I'm saying? But now, I don't give a fuck. This is my life. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I'm living in my truth, my own skin. If anybody don't like it, oh, well, to hell with them. Mm -hmm. They can be miserable or do whatever they want to do. Yes, and I definitely am excited and I'm happy that you're finally able to just be comfortable. And not that, like you said, not that you necessarily have to share every single thing with right, the world. Right. But at least now you don't have to feel like you got to have yeah. a group of friends with you so right. you don't look like y'all out <laughs> together. Together, right, right. Yeah, I hold hands work. in public. I might get a kiss in public. Like, it don't matter. Whatever I feel like doing, it's a free fucking country besides COVID. And, and, and I'm going to do what I want to do and be happy and and live my life like I'm too old to be hiding shit. Yes, I'm so glad you have. I know, girl. There. You told me so long ago. So glad, cause but Candy, you... you ain't never really cared. Like you'd be like, girl, whatever. I'm with you know. Yeah, well, I mean, because what I've found in my life is that when people feel like they have something over, over you, you, or if they feel like they yeah. got a secret or something that you don't want people to know. They try to use they that do. as a weapon. Extortion. Yeah, like, they, they yes. think that's a weapon. And, yes. and so to me personally, I just feel like if I always, and I told my daughter this in, in living life period, mm -hmm. it's like, you got to be happy with whatever decision you make. Yeah. So that if it ever come back, you be like, well, shit, I did it. Right. I had fun when exactly. I did it. So fuck it. Yep. You know that's what I mean? It. It, like live life with no regrets yep. as, as much as you can, you yep. know? And that's just where I'm at. I don't like when people feel like they got something to hang over your oh, head. Oh, agreed. That, that's so annoying. Agreed. You it know, is. and people it do is. people do that a mm -hmm. lot. Yes, they do. Yeah. Especially like bloggers. They think they be knowing something on you. Like yeah. before I came out, it was like, oh, I'm like, that ain't no news. No one cares. Like you can talk about me if you want to, but it don't matter. Like, but then when I came out, I was like, oh, what you had to say? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. This my wifey right here. Yeah. Uh-huh. This my girl. Uh-huh. We was holding hands. Oh, you saw us at the airport. Oh, Okay, that's cool. Yes. Like, it don't even matter. Like, go ahead. You, you think you're telling somebody something. They already know because I told them. Right. Because if you don't, you best believe they're going to be trying to Ooh. throw the hits, do this. Oh, I got some know. tea. Oh, yep. this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yep. Whatever. Yeah. Anyway, okay. So, I, we knock, I knocked that out to say I wanted to go back in time. Uh -oh. To us <laughs> dun, 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 dun. being back in the beginning of So So Dev years. Mm -hmm. And so, my question is. Were you at that point in life, you know, where were you, I mean, as far as with your your personal sense of who you were? Mm, um, when we first started, I just was a tomboy. Mm. I had never had no experience with women, never liked a girl, never felt like I wanted to be a dude or never felt nothing. I just felt like I was always a tomboy. I had never been attracted to women. Mm -hmm. But when I was working on my album... <clears throat> It was this girl that worked at Columbia. Yes, I know. And <laughs> I don't know what the fuck happened. Like, we started talking to each other on the phone and stuff. And then mm. it was like, I kept wanting to talk to this girl, like, longer and for long. When I didn't talk to her, I missed her. I was like, okay. I, I really didn't think nothing of it. But then when she came to Atlanta, the bitch never left. 
Yes, we all know that. She never <laughs> left, and and then, it, I mean, it lasted for a while, but it be I was like so trying to make people happy and make her happy. Like I had shut my family out. Like I don't care what y'all said about her. She wasn't right though. Like she wasn't a nice person really. But I was mm -hmm. just so smitten because I had never felt this way before. Like, mm -hmm. you know. So so it it, it, it went all bad. It was new. What mm -hmm. age? Was well, I was probably like 18, 17, 18. It was right before Functified came out while I was working on Functified. Mm -hmm. yep. So I think something happened that like was the end. And I was like, JD had bought me something. JD had bought me like a charm bracelet or something for Christmas. And he bought her like a little computer dictionary or something like that. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I guess she was mad and threw a fit. JD was like, brat. She is jealous of you. Like, it's that's not love. So it took for a couple of people to be like, we need you to wake up. I know you think, you know. Because mm -hmm. I never felt like that. So I didn't know what it was. I was just trying to make it work and, uh -huh. and keep it feeling good. But it didn't work, so. Okay, it's from an outside looking in perspective or whatever. Mm -hmm. Back then, you know, we were on the same. We were label mates, yeah. obviously. We weren't around you all the time. Mm -hmm. But we were obviously around each other at yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, I mean, I know we all picked up on... Um, Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But there, there, there was never a confirmation. Right. You never... No public affection. No public affection. No nothing. I nothing. never I never wanted to do that. I never wanted to be disrespectful to anybody because back then it wasn't as okay as it is now. So I mm -hmm. never wanted to disrespect anybody. Although, never, it was a lot of people. It was, but was you got to remember back life. then, Ellen lost her jobs and all kind of stuff happened. You said, who did? Ellen. Oh, I she had a TV it. show, and when she came out, she lost everything. Oh, that was then. I truly believe that there are soul con soul connections, that when you meet someone, either you, you really respond to them, you like them, and you, you're not sure why, or you just don't like them, and you, you're not sure why. I wouldn't have came out then anyway, because my grandmothers were still alive, like, and I had a sanctified grandmother that I would never want the church people to say nothing about her mm -hmm. or to criticize her. So, you know, she's passed on now for a few years now, but mm -hmm. I... I I didn't never want to disrespect nobody or make nobody else be uncomfortable. I was living for everybody else. Like See, I went to church. My, one of my grandmothers was sanctified, so when I went to her house, I had to go to church. So when I was in church, I played the drums. But when I slid to my other grandmother's house, I could do what I wanted to do. I lived inside of my bubble in my happiness and because I didn't want to disappoint anybody. Like, of course, the people, some people around me knew. Like, my mom and my close friends knew, but, like, mm -mm. if my granny ever tried to find out, no, granny, that's my friend. <laughs> yeah, uh, like. <laughs> so, moving right along. That was that relationship was going on. Mm -hmm. But then, mm -hmm. clearly, you know, you met Alan Iverson. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I mean, when you talked about this before, so I guess it's okay to mention. Right. That you... Mm, Met Kurt. Yeah. Hey, bitch. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, Rashida, no disrespect to you. You know, this is a long time ago, whatever. I met Kurt at the same time I was kind of talking to the girl, the yeah. first girlfriend, but I didn't, like, we were still kind of like friends. I don't think I had got into the new that I liked a woman. I don't think there was any sexual things happening yet between okay. us. And I saw. So I saw Kurt. We was at a club. We was kids. Like all of us was at like a I club. I was there. Girl, shut up. I was there. Was I there. remember he gave you five one hundred dollar bills with his phone number. Twenty. On it. Kurt Frost, Rashida's husband. Uh -huh. Before they were married, he when I first met him, he wrote his name and number on twenty one hundred dollar bills and begged me to call him. It was twenty one hundred. Twenty one hundred. Well, I just knew it was a whole bunch of hundreds on the like, front and the back. And you was like, "Oh, look at yeah. this, yeah, like, girl, you girl, gotta go ahead and talk girl. to girl." That had never happened to me before. I was like, "Oh my God, what I'm supposed to do?" Like for real, that was that was the get your attention, bitch, type of thing. And I was like, "You got my attention. What's happening? Who is this? Where this nigga at?" Well, I got a Lincoln Navigator. I got quite a few things what? though from, from this him? situation. Mm -hmm. From him? Mm -hmm. Oh. I ain't asked about who he was messing with, what was going on. If he had the audacity to take his time to write his name and number on the front and back of 20, nigga. So how fast did you call him? Uh, the next day. I know you did. You I did. Night? No, I didn't want to seem desperate, but I did call the next day. I was like, we're going to eat or something, nigga. Where you want to go? I'd have been in the Uber. I'm on the way. Okay. <laughs> He 
end up buying me a navigator and I, yeah it ended up being yeah but yeah. i didn't know about the whole rashida thing and then you know yeah it eventually fizzled out and and they got married and i yeah. was doing yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah of course so but my point is is like okay at that point you mm -hmm. had just kind of like started you know whatever that was <laughs> with the first person that you were attracted, first female that you were attracted to. Yes, all my life I had little boyfriends. From church I had little boyfriends, a teenager, high school, junior high. Mm -hmm. Had boyfriends, like uh, uh, the principal of the school boyfriend at the last high school I went to, like that was my boyfriend. Like I had the fly niggas, like with the water jabos and stuff. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I did not like girls at all. Right, but once you started liking a girl. Right. And you, but you were still liking certain guys anyway, bisexual mm -hmm. yeah okay mm -hmm. so you, yeah because you know i don't be wanting to offend people with labels okay yeah well bisexual so. is an old term so i don't mind that but all that new shit i don't do <laughs> like motherfuckers that call me a tree a stem a branch i said what the fuck is a stem a stud and a femme i said no i'm sorry i'm not either one of those i don't feel like i'm a stud at all like uh -huh. I'm, I, I feel like i'm still a tomboy the same motherfucker i was when i was younger but like i don't i like my nails pink like i'm not a stud like you know what i'm saying yeah. i like cute underwear i like them to match i like my hair done makeup like so i'm definitely not a stud so gotcha. uh, i guess I'm a cross between, so I'm a stem. Bitch, a stem what does that is mean? a stem is supposed to be a stud and a femme. It's so right. many titles. I said I'm not that. A stem is something that come out of a rose or a tree branch. I'm I'm not a stem. I'm just brat. Like please don't. I hate that title shit. Well, okay, I guess love you can me, call it fluid, but you know it's so many names now. Like some shit is animals and nah trans and no nah, we not even going there with no animals what's pan some is pan oh and, that's uh, what uh, uh what's her name uh janelle monae said, said she, she was, was pan. pan i had to read up on that one i didn't really I know don't know what all so that's are. why i don't really always like to even use right. labels period unless right. somebody you know offers it up and then i right. say oh, okay well that's what you're comfortable with cool yeah so we'll just go with bye okay anyway because my first girlfriend was then mm -hmm. in like seven i was 17 18 but mm -hmm. um I and had boyfriends before that and after that. Moving right along, when Allen Iverson came into the picture, because obviously that was a big deal. Yeah. You know, and everybody was like, wait a minute, hold on, so Brad, it didn't. Alan, I thought she was, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, mm -hmm. of course, that was, you know, the people on the street with the yeah. whispers, you know what I mean? Yeah. So how did that even come about? And did he <clears throat> even know? That you I, were I, I think he I think he knew, but we never talked about it. We never talked about it. I met his whole family and stuff. We never talked about it. We flew to Japan and all kind. Of, oh, I hope I ain't telling too much, y'all. I ain't never told this stuff, girl. We flew to Japan and uh, I had never been to Japan. I was like, oh my god, like it was crazy. Like it was so like, and I would get up in the morning like I'm a grandma's child. I'm very domesticated. Like I like cooking. I like cleaning. I like folding. Like I like doing stuff like that. It's like therapeutic. So I used to wake up and pick okay. his clothes out and cook breakfast and jack his dick off when he woke up in the morning you know the things he liked just made sure he was happy <laughs> and he spoiled me and made sure i was happy like i was like this is amazing like i was like this is it but then i think you know basketball players hoes okay right, like true. he had a baby mama some kids he had a lot of stuff going on so um it lasted for a good while. He, both of my grandmothers, they were alive. They loved him. Like, he was so sweet to them. Like, it was good for a minute. It was good for a long time. Uh-huh. So, it just didn't work out. It just didn't work out. He, oh, okay. he it, too, too many bitches. Got it. I think the last draw was we were sitting in the, at a hotel in the hallway outside the door just talking because some of the homies was in the room chilling watching the game or something. Mm -hmm. And this naked, half-naked bitch walks up the hallway talking about she looking for him. I'm sitting there with him. I'm like, bitch, I know you motherfuckers see me sitting here with this nigga. You still going to say you looking for him? I must have molly walked that bitch down the hallway. I was like, you know what? I said, I can't do this. I said, I can't do this with you. And, and I kind of like <laughs> faded out answering the calls and just had to pull back. And then it eventually fizzled out. But then I heard he was fucking this bitch, that bitch, bitches I knew, bitches I was cool with. Before I was like, okay, nope, I'm done. With that being said, was he... Your last boyfriend? Or did you date other guys after? Um, he was not my last. No, he wasn't my last. Okay. And wasn't my last girlfriend either. Well, I mean, we knew that. So, you know, it, yeah. There's, there's a few situations that I had that I'd rather not mention. But, yeah, like. 
-hmm. No, he wasn't my last, and she wasn't my last. So, mm -hmm. you know, but as of right now, this is my last. Aww. Jessica Dupart is my last. Um, so I'm grown as hell. Been through so many situations. Nobody's ever made me feel the way she does. Are y'all um, going to actually get married? <sighs> Uh, I don't know. I mean, I kind of want to, but uh, I never thought about like marrying a woman. Like, but mm -hmm. so I don't even know. Even when you seen um, uh, Niecy Nash and her. No, I mean, that was before. recently. I never yeah. really thought about it, but we've talked about it. Like, I mean, I would love to marry her. I don't think anybody would oppose. Like, you know, my grandmother's probably turning over in her grave, but I think as long as I'm happy, I feel like she would understand so i'm sure um yeah i i would marry her but i got you know my own legal issues and my own life issues that i want to keep separate from uh, her okay, yeah. so i don't need it, it to be a union yet because i don't want to put her into none of my shit right. that i've caused for myself <laughs> you guys do decide to get married will it be just a conversation and we both agree upon it or will someone actually propose Oh my God, it would be everything. Like, we go all out for stuff. I don't know if you've seen my Mother's Day tent, honey, that I built. And I don't know if you've seen I my birthday it. present. I did get a Bentayga Bentley. So we kind of go all out to, like, you know, surprise each other and do things out of the way to make it be like, oh my God, you know, mm -hmm. because what do you get somebody that has everything, her? You have to be creative and thoughtful and really pay attention to detail. And that's what I try to do. It would be nobody, um, We'll, we would propose. We probably both end up getting on one knee just to make it grand and extra. She <laughs> might get on the left knee. I might get on the right knee. It's just whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would do it in a heartbeat. Like, I love her. She is my forever. That is so fucking dope. Yeah. And, you know, it's so crazy. <laughs> the crazy parts of me that I think, um, just, you know, just from knowing you for years, it's like to see you go from just being, oh, yeah, cool with everybody, not really you know, talking about your personal life mm -hmm. to now, it's like you freely have these conversations. Man. So, like, it's awesome. Yeah, it feel it's good. So awesome. It feel good. Yeah. It's like a caged up bird been, like, let free to just do whatever and not give a fuck about what anybody has to say. Like, people always be like, I don't give a fuck what they talking about. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You, people do. want people to love them. They don't want people to hate them and say bad things about them. You got to fucking get a coat of armor for this fucking industry. Like, I've been getting called a dyke and a lesbian since I came out. So mm -hmm. I'm used to it now. So when people be like, when, when they say that shit, I be like, that, uh, people been saying that, but you going to have to come with something else to fuck with, fuck with me. So, okay, let's switch up the tone. Um, yeah. One of my people in my text group. Oh, Jesus. Hey, Candy, ask the... Oh, this is Gina Charlotte. Okay. Ask Brad what's her opinion on her sister, Lisa Ray. Oh. I mean, that's crazy to say your opinion. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to need a, 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 a question. Uh, okay, well, okay. okay, here's a question. Okay. Let's start off with, are you and Lisa Ray actually sisters? Like, what's y'all relationship? Yes, we are sisters. Okay. All right. And... <laughs> Like, okay, she's on the TV show right now. She's been lighting the internet up with some of her comments. First one, never have I ever had a threesome. Where's my son? It's dropping off. <laughs> oh, Lisa Ray. Lisa Ray, your sister, has a show on Fox Soul. Mm -hmm. Now... What did you think about some of the comments that she made? This she she's been lighting the internet on fire. Um, I heard she has. Um, I don't have any comments on it. She <laughs> is who she is, and she gonna say what she wanna say. She grown as hell, and whatever you know, what you call it, backlash that she get from it. Mm -hmm. I mean, she been in the industry for a minute too, so she know how to deal with it, and she know what she's saying. So mm -hmm. somebody come at her, she gonna check their ass, or either she gonna fix it, like. I ain't worried about her at all. She know how to handle motherfuckers. I learned a lot that from her. True. We used to whoop people ass in Chicago. Like really? We, I'm, when I tell you, I ain't going to even get off into it too much. But this one girl stole some money from my sister one time from a ball player dude that was my sister's boyfriend. And he, she wasn't, my sister wasn't supposed to know where the money was hid. So when the money was stolen, my sister had to tell him that, that she knew where the money was. And that the friend, she went in the money box and the friend just saw her go in the money box. It was just a bunch of mess. Oh, damn. And Man, when we saw and heard that that girl done did that, man, when I tell you, we molly whopped her. 
We dragged no. her all through the hallway of the apartments. We we had a we ooh in the elevator. It, it was like we from Chicago. Like we had to fight coming up. Mm-hmm. Like I had to fight growing up and go to school because I was light skinned Like bitches wanted <laughs> to cut my face. Like it, it was it was for real. So my defense mechanism is to fight. If I feel threatened by you or you do something or say something to me and I think you finna fight me, then I'm finna try to Reac- kill you. Yeah, right. my reaction is like that. But I'm better now. I've had anger management and I've been to prison. So I'm a much better person than I am, and I'm very proud of the maturity level that I have reached thus far. Okay, let's fast forward to prison. Uh-oh. Oh, God. <laughs> Get a drink. <laughs> so, that, that that prison experience, what did you think when they told you you was actually going to have to spend time in prison? Did you cry? Hell yeah. First, I was, I was in shock. I was in shock and then I went into like a depression and then like I started taking some depression medicine but that shit made me sick so then I had to start smoking more weed because the weed stopped you from being nauseous so I, they tried to put me on like uh what's the little the little man in a circle he be rolling around he got a black trim he just look Zoloft girl they tried to put me Zoloft. on Zoloft girl oh, that shit didn't work okay. it was bad so how long did you actually spend in prison two and a half years Tell me about the first day. Do you wow. remember it? Yeah. Um, the first day of prison, of course, I was nervous as fuck. I was, when they took me to Alto State Prison, which is like an hour and a half, two hours away from Georgia. Mm-hmm. I mean, from Atlanta. Um, my ankles were chained. My arms was chained. Hands was chained. And I was chained to a door. Mm. And they had to take me by myself because, you know, celebrity, whatever, whatever, whatever. whatever. So I had to get like special treatment, uh, special management unit. So, um, you know, I went all the way chained up. At least they played some good music for me. But I was chained up watching like where I was going. And I pulled up to that shit. I was like, this is un real barbed wire everywhere i was like wow this is what i'm walking into it is what it is like i've done it i'm here this is what's really happening right now mm-hmm. i mean it, it it took a lot to like for it to settle and realize like bitch you're in prison and you, you ain't, ain't in the out. county jail and you ain't getting out for a long time well at first when i got my sentence they told me i was doing 18 months mm-hmm. like a year and a half so i was mm-hmm. like okay cool had all my finances set up for all that then like almost at the end of that they done called me in the counselor's office talking about oh your tpm your time whatever whatever time you're gonna be released has been moved so you got another year that girl why i don't know why but when the counselor told me that shit girl they had to come get me no they had to come get me i about tow that office up girl i told that office up i was trying to get to the counselor to choke the shit out of her I was like, uh-uh, y'all ain't finna tell me I gotta stay here. Like, it was hard enough being there and not being able to leave, not going to the studio, mm-hmm. waiting to make a phone call because other people on the phone. Gotta set your shit up to call collect, getting mail. Like, the, like, that shit was crazy. So when I first get to the prison, I'm gonna go back to your question that you asked me because I always veer off and get to talking okay. about other shit. So when I first got to the prison, that shit was like a motherfucking movie, nigga. Like, when I tell you everybody... There was in the, I went to SMU. It was the special management unit building. Mm-hmm. Everybody in that motherfucker, they was on the, on the fucking uh, cages, the bars. Like it, like it was like a wrestling on. match. They was like ah, like it was loud as fuck. They were screaming. It was damn near like the crowd. Oh. I damn near thought I was dreaming. It was about to pull out a mic and be like, <laughs> yo, putting it down, putting it down, ain't a thing to me. I got one for the money. Hi. I got two for the babies. We could have shot a video at that shit. When I tell you the walls was covered, you couldn't see the walls behind them people. They were screaming and banging on the windows and shit. I was like, oh shit, I have arrived. Mm-hmm. I am here. They walked me to my shit. I had a net bag. You know, you had your little t-shirts and the shit they give you with the toothbrush and shit mm-hmm. in it. I had a net bag and I had something else in my hand. Nigga. I was like, when I tell you I was scared as fuck and I wanted to just cry. <laughs> That's what I wanted to know when you scared. No, nigga. I did the... I walked in that motherfucker like... <laughs> I turned on the nigga for real. I was like, yeah, you motherfuckers fuck with me if you want to, but I'm scared as shit. I'm like... <laughs> I'm, I'm walking like hood with a limp and shit. Motherfuckers going crazy. It felt like I was at a goddamn concert. Oh, and I got God. to my cell. The good thing is they in special management unit. In the special management unit, you like by yourself. Oh, well, that's good. So you in a cell by yourself. But you in a cell 
you know, you got to get used to peeing because motherfuckers walk past while you peeing. Oh, so now okay. I can pee in front of anybody. I don't give a damn. Like, I just squat. You, somebody got to pee, I will pull it down right there and piss on your ass because I'm just so used to <laughs> <laughs> peeing without the door being on. Motherfuckers be like, close the door. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, like yeah, like, yeah, it was Did it, you it have to fight? Um, I didn't have to fight. I almost had a fight. But I didn't have to fight. Um, motherfuckers just wanted to be my friend. I had the most trouble with the officers. You got it. We don't give a fuck who you is. You ain't yeah, know the brat in here. You Shantae, bitch. You ain't. I'm like, ooh, okay, this one. So that's how I feel like I've matured so much. Because having to eat that shit and not say nothing. Right. That is more draining than saying something. <laughs> you know yes. what I'm saying? Like, I'd rather cuss your ass out and get it off my chest. But to not say nothing and deal with motherfuckers talking shit about you. It, that's harder to mm -hmm. deal with. Um, have you seen any of those officers since you young? Since you girl, left out? yes, you I did. Have... Girl, I seen them. I seen them. I seen a couple of them that was real shitty to me. Oh, they be like. Hey, how are you? You know, I, we just want you to know it was just a job. You know, it was just a job. I'm like, mm hmm. Yeah, bitch. Mm -hmm. It was real <laughs> shitty to me. It was one that would get on me every time I got ready to go outside. Tuck your shirt in. Tie your boot up. Go get your ID. You ain't going outside. Like, they just would fuck with me on a regular. Her name was like Lieutenant Martin or something. This white lady. And every time we would get in line to like go to chow to go to lunch or whatever. Or go in the yard that's like recess or whatever. She'd be in my room like, Harris, get your ass over. You ain't got to And I would have to take that shit. That shit was like a drill sergeant in your mm. fucking ear. When Do you know how bad a motherfucker from the hood? You, a motherfucker getting your ear that close. First of all, give me 50 feet, bitch. You invading my space. E exactly. You know what I'm saying? So the first First thing you want to do is turn around and slap the shit out of a motherfucker like or something. But you can't do shit. You got to just take that shit. So that shit is like a training method that motherfucking work. Okay. Like mm -hmm. and, and, and then the bitch became my friend later when Mariah came to visit me. Mariah came oh. to visit me in prison and they called her to walk me down. Mm -hmm. mm. She's like, oh my God. Oh my God. This Mariah Carey. Oh my, I can't believe it. I'm looking at her like, bitch, you don't even like me. <laughs> You don't even like me. <laughs> or she liked me then. Those are now those are some really interesting stories. Girl, that I've never had the opportunity to hear. Girl, I've never talked about them. That's so cool. Like, I, I mean, obviously, I, I mean, I think everybody kind of wanted to know, like, what happened when you were in there. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, I mean, I met some really amazing people, Candy. Like, I met some women that like are in there for life, that because they killed a husband who was. Raping and beating them, raping and beating their children, mm. stealing from them, where the person damn near deserved to get fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, and they in there for life. So I had a little bread more than anybody. So I would just put stuff on people's books like mm -hmm. Ma Shirley. It was like older women in there. And, you know, I would let her wash my clothes and make sure she had food for the whole, you know, for the month. Like, and, and, and that's how I was fulfilled in there because I got to help people mm -hmm. and, you know, do what I love to do. And which, you know, my granny, my granny, my grandmothers and my mom and dad and my family, I feel like they raised me well when it came to giving. Well, maybe not too well because you just yeah. give away every fucking thing and then you don't got shit for yourself. Right. Like if my granny had a chicken wing, she'd give away the drum, mm -hmm. the flat and keep the little tip for herself. <laughs> You know, and and I feel like I got that from her. So, I just tried to help people all the time. Here's another question. Uh-oh. Did you ever have a hookup in jail? No. Never? Never had a hookup in jail. I always thought it was disgusting. They would put a sheet up on the bars because you, you could see through the bars. Uh -huh. They would put a sheet up and have somebody watch out. But then everybody know you fucking. Right. Like, I... I I couldn't do that. And, like, there was nobody that I wanted to even trust to do that with. Right, 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 right. Like, I was cool. Like, no. I had I had good friends, but there was never, like, any sexual nothing for me. I couldn't do it. Because you don't know where these people been, their background, who they are. Like, you don't get to see they, uh, they, they medical records. Like, so you don't know if they got nothing. That's with anybody, though. No, fuck that. And new people, you can be like, let's go get tested. 
Well, let's true. go to the doctor. Not in prison, you can't, mm-hmm. unless you, you know, really, really paying somebody. Let me see their records. Did anybody ever try to holler? Absolutely. Okay. Like, every fucking day, somebody tried to holler. Motherfuckers were sending their pictures from a whole nother building trying to get me to holler. <laughs> yeah. Like, I had options. You know, I could have chose easy. <laughs> I had plenty. I ain't never had a problem with options, boo. <laughs> Never had a problem with options, okay? Free or in prison. Never had a problem, but mm-hmm. I chose not to do that. I'm just like, it's so much Never work, have though. I talked about none of this stuff. I right. talked about a few things in variety, like about my baby and stuff, but like I never really talked about the prison stuff in depth, like in how I felt and some of the things that happened. Like I wrote a book actually when I was locked up. Um, I, was in, I was in the author's club and this girl that was writing it with me and helping me write it was a lifer. She was in for life. Mm -hmm. So when I tried to keep corresponding with her when I got out, they stopped it. We tried to, we tried to like sneak it in and other people's names and camouflage it, but you know, they opened the mail. So they read it and they would see it and they stopped it. Oh, she couldn't send you the book? No. It wasn't finished. I did like 30 short, like James Patterson chapters. Like I used to read James Patterson in prison all the time. I loved the way his chapters were like short. So mm-hmm. I wrote it like that. But yeah, I'm like halfway through it and it's just been in a standstill since like 2011. That sucks. I it's know. Gotta be it a was way getting to get good though. Her. Can't you have a lawyer hit her up and come see her on one of them visits and get the paperwork? <laughs> I don't know. I got to figure it out though. Well, I'm going I'm to do, I'm gonna do something because the same, it's my story. So mm-hmm. if I need to explain the whole story to another book writer, because I would love to like do a movie or like a docu-series. Right. I definitely would watch. Yeah, so people could see what the fuck I've been through. How I became the best of both girls. One side of the family was sanctified, the other side I got the wild out. So that's how Mm -hmm. I'm like a tomboy on one side and a Christian on the other side. (laughs) Uh, I I mean, I relate to you in that way because my daddy's side of the family is super religious Strict, and yep, then my yep. other side of the family got the wild yeah, out. Right. Right. <laughs> right. So I totally feel you. Now, what's up with the music? Oh man. First of all, music is my passion. Okay. Mm-hmm. I love music. I love doing music. I, when I first came home, me and JD did a mixtape and then we did some more songs. Like we did some really, really good records. And he he went to uh, whoever the people is he be going to to put out stuff. Uh, L.A. Leakers. Mm-hmm. And he dropped some of the stuff and it didn't do shit. Mm-hmm. So I'm just not. I'm from the era of shit popping when you do shit. Right. Like I totally <laughs> when you could. work hard on songs and write them and spend all that heart sweat and tears in this blood sweat and tears in the studio. And nothing happens to me. That's disappointing. I feel like, well, people must don't get it. Like, I must not be doing something right. So, I had tried to work with different artists and try to help them. They end up fucking you over. They feel yeah, entitled. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You go to a red carpet. If they don't go, they mad. Like, uh, you know, you, you give them money and do all kind of shit. And it just ends up not working. I've done it like six times and I'm over it. Mm-hmm. But I'm in the studio all the time. I got a studio at the crib. Um, I did a song called Quarantine with you. Recently, let's stay cooped up because the roof on the coop up and the Hennessy bottles on the bar was just too much because I smoke, I drink, hope to stop, but I can't. Since COVID, and it did really, really well, and it was about my baby, mm-hmm. and it was some heartfelt shit, and people loved this. I love doing music, I do music anytime. I'm supposed to be doing some shit for Pussy Valley, P Valley. Oh, um, I love it. Any music is easy to me, it's simple, like that is my passion, that is my release, but it just feel like our work ain't appreciated the way it used to be like i agree and, and, uh, with you. it's hard the, these <laughs> to to get reconditioned to the way they do music now compared to way it was back in the day Girl. when we were really doing it doing it yeah it is hard because it's like they just throw up records all the time and it's been such a quick burn whereas we would put out music and it was gonna last at least a good yes. six months a year year now oh, whatever man. and you didn't really see like yeah. everybody gets bored quick with people Dude, so it's like man and then these, they, uh, these artists put out like 10 songs a week yes you be like damn nigga you just put out one yesterday oh, like the album have 50 songs on it it's like wait what yeah like <laughs> so what do you want to do now what is the goal um well i'm an executive producer on growing up hip-hop atlanta i'm trying to get something going with um queen of the ring um that's that? a female rap battle thing where uh female and this has been going on for a long time my partner babs we've been trying to make something happen Mm -hmm. for a long time but people just don't get it but caffeine is now doing the url battles with the male uh 
battle rappers. Okay. So now the females, they're, they're kind of like integrating them in. But I want to do something like heartfelt where you see the shit these bitches go through. All these bitches ain't drop dead gorgeous. That was the issue with us getting a deal before. Like, mm -hmm. it wasn't no eye candy. But the shit that these bitches have been through, like some of these bitches ain't got internet to FaceTime me to talk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, one of their baby daddies just got killed. And then the, the bitch that they battling next week it was fucking with the baby daddy that got killed. Like, it's like yeah. really like, oh my God. So... I want to do that. I want to, like, executive produce shows. I have so many, like, ideas, and I just feel like they be stuck and stagnated because I don't trust easy. Mm. Motherfuckers been fucked and dragged through the mud and told so many lies. They're just like, okay, I need to let the guard down and let, you know, a little bit and, and let people try to help. But I have trust issues really bad. I feel you on that. <laughs> I mean, people, people have you fooled. You think they cool, and then you be like, Damn, you did that to me? Like, I would never expect you to do that to me. So it make you feel like you're not a good judge of character anymore. Who's your best, best buddy on Dish? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> best buddy on Dish. Headcrack is always neutral. He's never in anything. Let's set it. Let's set it. B-R-A-T, come on my get it. Go, it's 14 after the hour, so what you want to do? But then I kiki with Porsche and we talk about hair and titties and and, <laughs> and, and body work. And, you know, like like if I need a good hookup for something, I call her or I call you. Oh, thank you, by the way, for dude. He's good. Mm -hmm. He's a bit aggressive, but he's good. He's mm -hmm. helping my baby with her show. Oh, yeah, okay, I got it. Yeah, got yeah, it. yeah, he's good. Um... Mm -hmm. And Gary, he's so shady, so he he real iffy. So sometimes Gary like you, sometimes he don't. Some people is wrong. She don't they? want him. She's moved on, and he's moved on. Gary, she ain't on no suicide watch. She right. don't care. No, she don't care about that man no more. She cared about him. And she he don't care about her. her. Do you see what you just read? He's she, engaged. She got a yeah, one knee on Idris Elba stage. Ring, she man. don't need to be on Idris Elba stage. Ring, she she was, don't want to be. She is doing her own thing. Wait a minute. Don't feel bad for her. Well, wait a minute, y'all. Come on, y'all. I mean, don't do hey. that. Y'all don't do that. My well, nerves just bad. To help. <laughs> so, I, you know, it, I would probably, I had to say Portia. Red and I don't even go together, and she gave me a shirt, and I totally wore it with and it her was face super on cute. it. We okay. don't really talk too much, though, outside of, you know, we've been, since COVID, we've been doing stuff from at home, so we don't really kick it or hang out or nothing, so I really... I, I guess it would have to be Portia because Sherry's in L.A. Uh -huh. She's cool, but Sherry Shepard just joined the show. So, oh, yeah, you I know, and Sherry. I do uh, radio with Gary every morning, but Gary just shady. Like, <laughs> but congratulations <laughs> to Gary for beating cancer. Oh, um, yes. For that beating was cancer. Um, but, yeah, Gary, if Gary don't take his medicine, he'll cuss your ass out in a second. You'd be like, damn, nigga, I thought you was my friend. Right. So I, I, it would probably be Portia. It would probably be Portia. All right, well, I'm just going to wrap this thing up. Yeah, man, part two coming soon. Yeah, we got to do it a different time. As a matter of fact, we just got to all go out to eat and kick it and hang yeah, out man. and on some off-camera type of stuff. Okay. But anyway, thank you so much. Thank you, Candy, for well, having me. Yes, I, I appreciate really appreciate this. this. I just Anytime, feel... we family. Whatever you need me for, I'm here. Yeah. I'll come even cook with um Old Lady Gang in the kitchen. Wait, you can cook that good? Girl, I'm a grandma's baby. I cook collard greens. I've been cooking healthy lately. Zucchini boats and, and uh, Chilean sea bass. Like, you know. Like that? People don't know, girl. I'm, I'm the best kept secret. I'm Shylana's best kept secret when it comes to cooking. Okay, I will have to see this. <laughs> mm -hmm. I definitely need to see this. I need some of them old lady gang uh, catfish nuggets, though. Okay. Ooh. Mine are the, my favorite are the salmon uh, bites. Ooh. Those are so good too. I enjoy and the drinks was very good there. Thank you. Thanks for having me there. I love the pictures that y'all have up. The, they're Thanks. really nice. Well, and this, good service. Well, mm -hmm. thank you. I appreciate. it. <laughs> this was a great discussion. Yeah, man. All right, y'all. I guess we hit on everything Speak that we can on hit. It. Thanks for watching. Oh, make sure you follow. Brett, Brett is so so Brett on all platforms. I think I might be so so deaf Brett on Snapchat, but I don't do Snapchat. I'm on Instagram the most, so mm -hmm. it is what it is. So so, so Brett. Brett, catch me on Dish Nation every weekday on Fox. You can catch me on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Um, 
We got over 80 million listeners in the morning in the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Um, You can catch me on Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta on Wii TV, And it's going to be some more stuff coming up in the works. So I ain't letting no grass grow under my feet. I missed out on that time when I was locked up in prison. Fuck that. It's Please. over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Like, share, subscribe to my channel. Tell everybody about it. And thanks for watching. Speak on it. Speak on it. <laughs> I had already heard. I can turn a shade tree into a money tree.